We welcome you to college basketball today from Amherst, Massachusetts. Final game of the regular season. The UMass Minutemen getting set to take on the St. Bonaventure Bonnies as we welcome you inside the Mullen Center. Good to be with you, everyone. Mike Corey, along with former St. Bonaventure great professional and NBA coach David Vanderpool. Good to be with you here today, my friend, as we get set for senior day for the Minutemen. Great to be here with you, Mike. Thank you. You and I were just up in Olean, New York, your former team in the Bonnies last weekend getting to win over St. Joe's, 89 to 76. UMass coming off the loss at Duquesne, 88 to 79. Underway here today from Amherst. Yes. Uh, Bonnie's starting out man to man, and UMass going straight inside. And right off the bat, it's Wildens Lebec who puts it in for UMass. And here's your starting five today for the Bonnies. We got Carol Luke. Starting at the point, Daryl Banks, Moses Flowers, Jan Farrell, and Chad Venny leading it out for the Bonnies. How about the career day that Banks had last weekend? <laughs> he went crazy, and then, you know, for him, this is actually the second time that I've seen him play live in, in Ole in New York, and he's had more than 30 points each game, so he's looking for a big one tonight. First shot on the way is good. That's Moses Flowers. He had a good game as well, too. He's liable to light it up from the outside also. The Bonnies defense. Speaking of the inside, here's Benning, and he goes back out to Banks, and NBA range three is off the mark to the left. And another offensive board, Benning. Here's Jan Farrell for the three. And that's what he does for the Bonnies. He stretches the floor. He's one of their best three-point shooters. Farrell looking to get it in for Benning. Benning. Got it. Over Conte. Nice shot. Very nice turnaround hook shot. Uh, you know, you don't see, you don't see as many post-ups all the time, but uh, Benning definitely can handle himself down low. Great footwork. Saw the turnover numbers. Four for St. Bonnie's and three for UMass so far in this first half. Back inside for Benning. Double team comes immediately. I'm shocked that they doubled him down there with these shooters out here. And there it is. You call as soon it. as you <laughs> right person, not one of those better shooters. Exactly. That came directly from Banks' possession, and he was wide open for the three. Yeah, and, and the Bonnie's do a great job of moving around the perimeter. They know that Benning is a problem down low. Oh, that's a problem as R.J. Luis takes it in and throws it down. A-10, and what it does is they continue to beat up on each other, and it makes it really tough for any of the other teams to get into the tournament. But, uh, you know, they, they just talk about the parity in the league and, and the quality of the players. Rasul Diggins knocks down a three ball. UMass is on a 14-0 run. And here's Moses Flowers with it. Also, that's a few unforced errors as well. That last play was the sixth turnover of the game for St. Bonaventure in the previous possession. And Flowers takes it in, finally to get a two. And that's what they that's what they have to do. I mean, I talked about it a little bit earlier. That look to get a stop, get out in transition, maybe try to get an easy basket without the defense being set. That ends a 14-0 UMass run on that bucket right oh. there. But a three ball back the other way by Weeks. They want to make this a little bit better situation. There's another turnover by him. Steal taken away here by R.J. Luis. Finds the cutter, look back, and he throws it down. He, just, he was a great player. That's a great story. And We'll always remember that, that's for sure. It was one of my favorite years, 1995. <laughs> I don't know why, it just, that was a transition. I was leaving high school, coming here to college, right? You know, that, and here's a jumper that goes up and in. No, it's always like the last thing I do when I'm traveling. For whatever reason, I know people are saying, what do you mean the last thing? But it's like I look at the Weather Channel app and think, oh, should I bring a jacket? What do I need here? This <laughs> right. And I probably should put that more up to the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Big jumper here by UMass and Keon Thompson, who puts it in with now 26.4 seconds remaining. Banks, three ball. Got it. What a shot from Daryl Banks. We're tied at 29. Best. That is Kyra Luke's first field goal today. Just four points, the other two from the free throw line. Here's a three ball. Diggins, yes. Figure some things out. Maybe, maybe able to make some shots here. Three ball, that's cross. And Matt Cross trains it. UMass love to see that. Love to see that. If he's able to make some outside shots, they definitely got a chance to take control of this game. UMass so far here in this game. Flowers, another one, yes. And on the deck, another Weeks to Levesque. Another mishandled basketball. UMass is doing a great job 
contesting passes, not letting anything get in easily. You were a great player back in the day. Your son's <laughs> trying to follow in your footsteps, man. Devin Vanderpool, and you guys were just back at your alma mater at St. Bonaventure last week, and he had his official visit. How did it go? It went great. I mean, you know, it was nostalgic for me. To, <laughs> there he is acting like he thinks he may be able to take me one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't know what type of defensive player I right. was. But uh, it, it was great. It was nostalgic for me being in the building uh, and on campus with him, showing him, you know, around in certain places. And uh, it's exciting. I mean, it's an exciting time for him. He, he's earned scholarships from multiple colleges and universities. And he's going he's gonna to have a chance to be really, really good. Um, he's still growing. He's, he's still a, a very, very young teenager. But um, I'm excited for him. You know, definitely a, a strong team from the conference. And, like we talked about earlier, they win a succession of games. They probably should get in that large bid. The committee's listening. Flyers lost a tough one last night by four on the road at St. Louis. UMass is 16 of 20 for the free throws in the second half after one for one in the first half. And a three pointer goes up and in for St. Bonaventure. So all of a sudden now, it is 59 to 56. As Flowers brains that, he's got 12 points. Now it's about defense. And now they give up an open three from the corner, and that's the one place that's the most analytically driven shot from three is the corner three. And there it is again. You know, we talked earlier about UMass being able to answer the bell each and every time. Weeks hits, hits that corner three right after Flowers knocks down the three. So let's see what, if they have another answer. Dickens underneath. The basket is scored by Conte. That was a 14 and nothing run that UMass had early after being down 13 to six. And led since. Largest run for the Bonnies, but it was way early in the game. It was eight nothing. Here's Flowers, step back three. Count it and a quick timeout taken by Mark Schmidt. With 102 remaining, it is down to a five point lead. Big time shot by Flowers, who's been stepping up big for the Bonnies. Here you have them setting a the double away again for Flowers, who decides to go to the step back. He's been key in making sure the St. Bonaventure has a chance at taking this lead again. Here are our position as the eighth seed in the tournament. So, you know, this is a this is really a, a, a good win for, for UMass. Luke beats it over for Flowers. They get the ball back to Bonnie's, of course, here, but it's not going to matter. Four seconds remaining. UMass is going to win it. 71 to 60, the final score today. Senior day knocking off St. Bonaventure, led by Diggins and Louise to 14 points, and Lebec had 11. For David Vanderpool, Mike Corey, thanks for watching. We're going to send you now to Washington, D.C. Paul Burmeister, Corey Robinson, Caroline Pineda for the call of VCU and GW.